I've never been the most voracious reader, but it's crazy to think how much improvement I've seen from some books throughout my career. And most of them are not even about software engineering. So today, I'll share with you five books that have not only helped me become a more effective person, but also a much better coder. Early in my journey, I realized that becoming a better engineer isn't just about mastering technical skills. I've talked about that many times on this channel. It also requires personal effectiveness, and there's no better book on that than the classic Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Before knowing this book, I was already inadvertently applying some of its principles. When I started my blog, I didn't really have a clear direction, but as I got more involved, the value of being proactive and beginning with the end in mind became increasingly apparent to me. Establishing a clear vision, at least in my head, about what I wanted the blog to be and how I wanted it to look was key for me to decide what to work on on any given day. This book's emphasis on prioritizing tasks based on importance rather than urgency has been particularly influential in my career. In our industry where there's no shortage of bugs and potential improvements to code, it's easy to get caught in the pressing but ultimately less important tasks. The lessons from the book really help to focus on more strategic initiatives that have a long-term impact. Things like refactoring to have a strong foundational architecture to build upon that is less prone for bugs down the line. Instead of just spending all of my time in trivial bugs or administrative chores. But perhaps one key takeaway from this book that truly transformed my approach towards work on life is habit number five. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. As engineers, we often jump straight into problem-solving mode without really understanding the full context or perspective of others. This habit taught me the importance of active listening and that has significantly improved my collaboration with team members and stakeholders. You will not always be in agreement and more often than not, things will not be done the way you intended. But it's by listening that you are able to incorporate the concerns of others and reevaluate your own action plan so that it lands more effectively when you share it. The lessons from this book, in my opinion, really are timeless and they can definitely be applied directly to software engineering. It of course tackles things like personal productivity, but also effective communication and empathetic leadership. Traits that are as essential for today's engineers as they are for any other profession. This book was a game changer for me in terms of how I approached problem solving. The beauty of how not to be wrong is that it's not just about numbers and equations, but about the mindset behind mathematical thinking. It's like learning to see the world through a new lens. I remember when I was preparing for my coding interviews as an engineering student. These interviews were critical for my career and they were also pretty daunting. I always hated coding problems and I had to solve these in a very short amount of time. And the interviews aren't just about knowing how to code, but about being able to approach these problems logically and systematically. Applying the principles from this book helped me enhance my problem solving skills, which proved invaluable during these technical interviews, even when I did not get the actual code right. Actually, even more in those instances. It gave me a fresh perspective on mathematical logic that went beyond the algorithms or data structures. This sort of thinking, along with the ability to communicate it effectively, was what saved a lot of my interviews. I guess what I really liked about this book is that it offers practical insights into using mathematical reasoning in real-life situations, not just theoretical scenarios. It discusses how mathematical patterns can be found everywhere, from predicting election results to detecting fraudulent behavior. It's been a while since I read it, so I'm probably missing a lot, but I I remember that one of my favorite takeaways was to embrace uncertainty and variability as part of the process rather than something to be eliminated. An idea that I later picked up again thanks to this book, which I highly recommend as well. It stuck with me and has greatly influenced how I approach both problem solving and the regular chaos that I deal with in day-to-day -day life. So I'll leave you with this thought. Understanding of mathematical thinking can provide you with so much more than just the ability to crunch numbers or solve equations. It can help you see patterns, make connections, and approach problems creatively. Skills that I think are really valuable for software engineers. I remember when I was trying to learn to code. My end goal was just to build iPhone apps since the App Store had just been announced. But there was no way I could jump straight into Objective-C without some prior knowledge of structured programming. So I was stuck with C for a good while, and every time I tried to jump ahead to the realm of iPhone development, I got stuck and it was back to basics for me. I realized that having a deep understanding of how computers work was unavoidable. And it's not just about writing code that works, but also about making it efficient. Back then, I just got away with learning C and then Objective-C, but when I moved to Seattle, I decided to go back to basics and picked up this book, Code. It's not light reading, especially as you move up to the second half of the book, but it's so worth it in my opinion. This book took me on a journey through the inner workings of computers, demystifying complex concepts like binary code and Boolean logic. This book gave me an insight into the foundational knowledge about computer systems, the things that hopefully enable us as engineers to write more optimized code, and to take into account not just what we want our software to do, but also how it interacts with the underlying hardware. 
It can seem intimidating at first to delve into these fundamental concepts, but it definitely opens up a lot of new ways to think about your code. Working for Citibank was my first time facing diverse and critical real-time software development problems. It was a challenging time, but it was also when I discovered the power of this book, The Pragmatic Programmer. Now this book is not new, but I think it holds up really well. The thing is that it feels more like a mentor that guides you through your programming journey and offers practical and foundational advice. It deals with issues like code organization, debug strategies and even things like team collaboration. One major takeaway from the book for me was its emphasis on writing clean maintainable code. This might seem like common sense now, but back then as a novice programmer it wasn't something I really paid much attention to. The book made me realize that clean code isn't just about making my job easier, but it's also a responsibility to my team and to future developers who might have to work with that code. Another significant lesson for me from the book was the importance of constant learning and adapting new techniques in this ever-evolving field. This helped me quite a bit when I joined Microsoft and I needed to jump into full stack development, leaving my iOS experience behind for a bit. And it's critical advice more than ever with AI now. I actually tried reading other books on software engineering, but this is the one with advice that truly felt like it stood the test of time and can still really improve a programmer's skill in today's world. There's a certain magic in immersing yourself in the history of your craft. When I first started interviewing with Microsoft, I felt the need to understand not just the nuts and bolts of the job itself, but also how we got here as an industry. Around that time, I got this book as a gift, The Innovators by Walter Isaacson, except this is the Spanish version. This book offers a comprehensive history of the tech industry, and I learned a lot about the innovators that shaped our digital world. Reading about their struggles and successes did two things for me. First, it gave me a sense of context. It was humbling to realize that every tool or technology that we take for granted today is built in years and sometimes decades of work by others. And second, it sparked inspiration. Learning about these people and their groundbreaking ideas motivated me to think beyond my daily tasks and consider how I could contribute to the future. This shift in perspective can be game-changing for anyone in this field. Just like code helped me understand essential computer concepts, the innovators really got me thinking about our industry's trajectory and my place within it. So if you find yourself feeling really unmotivated by day-to-day -day coding tasks, or you're losing sight on why you got into software engineering in the first place, try stepping back and looking at the big picture. My experience, at least, was that understanding where we come from can inspire a lot where you want to go next and motivate you to start building the next wave of technology. Books are great, but there really isn't any better teacher than your own past mistakes. So I recently made an entire video on my own top five mistakes and what I learned from them in case you want to go watch that next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.